Welcome back everybody to the sixth video in the series. Um, I wanted to show my settings here, right here. You can go to settings and then you choose gameplay and click on bed slider. And here you can adjust a few things. You can uh, adjust the bed size to adjust by the small blind every time you increment it. Um, here I got my preflop buttons and here I got my postflop buttons as you can see I have chosen percentage of the pot to be 35 percent for a one-third pot bed then a two-thirds pot bed and a over bed percent pot bed because I got a few questions about this um, people were a bit confused of how to get it um, I guess uh, this is the problem people had. They only saw 110, but you can just type in here the percentage you want to have. So there you go. You click uh, apply changes, OK, and you go you're ready to go. Um, let's see. The bank rule is at $130, so we're still gonna be playing 10 now, and let's jump into the action. I was thinking about what uh, what I could talk about today uh, in my video because I didn't feel like talking too much about preflop ranges and stuff like that. Uh, and what I wanted to talk about is what to think about during a poker hand while you're playing, um, what you should be thinking about, and uh, what you should be thinking about is first of all what is your opponent's range and secondly what is your perceived range so what hands does your opponent think you have by taking your actions so here I bet the flop um, he probably has a lot of aces in his range um, so I could have Check back this turn. Now that he check raises the turn, what's he what's he telling his range is? He's basically telling me he has ace queen, ace do suited, ace three suited, maybe, but he called a tree bet, so probably ace queen, maybe pocket queens. So I have very much implied odds here to call. So I'm gonna do that. The turn bet might have been bad. Um, that's because I was talking and wasn't thinking too much. But we miss unfortunately and we'll have to fold. Here uh, my opponent bet out on the flop and is betting out on a turn. Um, I'm gonna call again. Um, what's his range? Um, he could have a hand like Queen Jack, Jack 9, he could have 7 9, he could have Ace 10, he could have a hand like Ace 8. Now that he's betting only half the pot, um, I call the turn so I look pretty strong here um, for calling the turn. I floated the flop. I could have had, I could have had any ace in my range. So that he's the fact that he's betting have the pot on this river is, uh, and my range is looking pretty strong. Probably means he has better than ace or at least an ace. So I'm gonna fold here. I bet the flop. Um, I'm gonna be betting a turn with my equity. Uh, what's his range? Um, he could have 10 8 suited, uh, queen 10. He could have any jack, any 9. He could have any, he could have, uh, well, not any 9, but you know what I'm saying. Um, it's kind of uh, a bit tough to do this with two tables, but I think I'm gonna continue anyway. Um, here, um, I'm gonna start with a check call because if I check raise my range is gonna look like draws and very strong hands so it's gonna be pretty polarized 
Oh, it checks back the turn. Um, there's no flushes in this range, probably, because he probably would have bet the turn with a flush draw. Um, it's possible, though. Um, he doesn't have straights. He doesn't have two pairs. Um, so the question is, how much can he call? I think we're going to go for a small bet, hoping to induce a race, trying to underrepresent our hand. Like, I'm saying I have a 9 here, or pocket 8s. So, we're hoping he's gonna go for the bait and raise us here. Or call with a hand like pocket eight, putting us on, I don't know what, um, a weaker hand. And he called, and we can see what he had. He had pocket eights. So that worked out. We're gonna call here with the fives. Um, okay, so. This is a flop. Um, my opponent could have ace king, he could have queen jack, he could have king queen, he could have a lot of hands here. I don't have a lot of equity, so um, it's not a great spot to bluff. My opponent's range is stronger than my perceived range. So I'm gonna just gonna fold. Okay, so here we have a flop um, that hits my range more often than it hits my opponent's range. Um, I have a 10 which blocks ace-10 and 10-9. I have a jack, which blocks two pair combinations. And I can have kings, queens and jacks too, which my opponent cannot have because he did not 3-bet preflop. So okay, this guy raised from another gun, so we're gonna assume he has like top between top fifteen percent and top twenty-four percent of hands. We call. This is a board that does not hit my opponent's opening range too often. Um so he's gonna have a lot of overcard type hands on this board. It hits my range a lot more often than it hits my opponent's range, so I'm gonna go for a check raise. I can have pocket trees, pocket fours, pocket sixes, five seven suited, possibly five do suited, and all of the big combo draws. He thinks and calls. Um, so what does that mean? He probably has an overpair. Uh, probably doesn't have a flush draw because flush draws tend to call a lot faster, they don't have to think about it. He might have thought about jamming, that's possible, so I guess it could still be in his range. Um, a set would have definitely shoved, so he doesn't have a set. Um, yeah, so we're basically gonna bet this turn and see what happens. There we go. My perceived range was very strong in that situation, so he was he, he would have a very tough time calling down with an overpair. Pocket trees, um, you could call this. Um, I'm gonna tree bet it. Because that's my style. I tree bet my entire range in this spot. We flop pretty bad uh, for me because my opponent often has hands like king queen, queen jack, jack 10, 8 9 suited, 9 10 suited, stuff like that. So we're just gonna check back and fold. Ace high board. Um, I can have more big aces in my range than my opponent because my opponent just called pre flop. He calls the flop. Um, probably would have. Check raised if he had a6 or a3. We turn a 10, 
but we don't really have too much showdown value. We have some, but I'm looking to get some falls by the river from aces. Most of his aces are pretty weak here. Um, he could have ace x suited for a flush draw, but that's a very small part of his range. Um, he could still have a set of sixes or trees, but also a very small part of his range. So we're gonna barrel here. But we do get called by an ace. So maybe I should have overbid in that spot. Okay, so this guy took very long to call preflop, so probably has a weaker hand than normal. Probably doesn't have a pocket pair. So we're gonna see about this flop and expect to take it down very often. He calls very quickly, so what does that tell us? He could have an 8, um, he could have a flush draw. So we're gonna barrel and probably barrel the river with our equity. He calls very quickly and the flush comes in. So this is pretty dicey now, and he dumb bet shoves, so he probably hit his flush. So we're just gonna fold. Flop <laughs> a boat here. Um, I'm gonna check to my opponent and underrepresent my hand because there's not much my opponent can have when I have all the cards. And we're gonna check again because I don't think the four is gonna hit him very often. And on this five, I might get a little bit out of him. Maybe he calls with ace high. I'm trying to underrepresent my hand. Okay, so ace jack here. We're gonna three bet because it's the button. He has a wide range, and ace jack is definitely in front of that range by a lar large margin. It's gonna call with a lot of weaker suited aces, which we dominate, and weaker jacks. King tree suited. I'm going to tree bit. Might not have been such a good idea because it's only a half stack, so it's probably pretty fishy. But that said, that also means his range is probably a bit looser. It depends. Could be a knit. My opponent dunk bets here on this flop. Um, What's my opponent's range? Um, probably he doesn't have two pairs or sets because those hands would check raise or check call. So I'm gonna start with a raise. Um, I think my opponent often has just a 10 or some sort of draw. Like Queen Jack, even though Queen Jack is pretty unlikely. So now that he calls, I'm pretty confident that my opponent has a 10, maybe ace 10. So we're just gonna get some value. But he quickly folded. So what does that tell us? Probably maybe he had a hand like 6-7 for his trade draw. Here I tree bet. I'm gonna see bet this flop. My opponent could have a hand like King Queen, Queen King Jack, suited, um, flush draws. So I definitely need to protect my hand. Here, um, 
What's my opponent's range? Um, small pocket bears, suited aces, king queen, queen jack, um, maybe ace queen. Um, I'm gonna start with a C bet, get small pocket bears to fold, and the missed suited aces and suited connectors. Um, has like king jack of spades too. Queens will tree bet. And we call the shove. Good result. Pocket tens, you could go either way here. You could tree bet, you could call. Um, I'm gonna go with the tree bet because I think at these stakes, um, people call tree bets too too light. And he shoves. So what's my opponent's range? Um, he can have ace king, uh, very likely. He could have a hand like aces, kings, or queens. Um, he snap shoved though, so I mean, could mean. Aces, uh, but that's less likely. I think he would have taken a, a different kind of line with that. Um, could definitely be Ace King, and I think it's gonna be Ace King most of the time. So I'm just gonna call. And it was Ace King, but we lost. That's okay. Here, my opponent raised preflop. Um, bet the flop. I didn't tree bet because I was uh, paying too much attention to the other table. Um, we're gonna start with a float here because his range is very, very wide for raising in a small blind and c betting his flop. He's probably not gonna c bet a 9, so his range is pretty polarized towards a queen, draws, and pretty much crap. And we're gonna call. So now my opponent is telling me he has a jack or a weak queen. And we can overbet in spot, represent a big hand. Uh, I again missed a spot on the left. I'm not gonna open king jack. Country bet here. Okay, so this guy quickly calls. She's gonna do it most of his range. Um, some of his range she's gonna forbid. So we can assume it's slightly weaker. Normally I want to bet the king jack. Um, I don't know why I decided to do it this time, but in general it's probably fine against the button. Check 7 suited is not a hand I recommend opening from another gun, um, but I'm going to do it anyway. As well as 4 7 suited. We're going to see this flop. Um, my opponent could have a lot of small pocket pairs to the daces, um, which he's going to fold, unless he has a flush draw. Um, now that he called, um, I'm putting him on. He could have a hand like ace 10. He could have king 10, he could have jack 10, he could have queen jack, he could have king queen. Um, that ace is usually not going to help him, as he has king jack, ace 10, or ace queen. So I'm going to bet the turn.
Okay, so another spot here. Um, I'm gonna start with check. Why? Why am I checking? Because my opponent has a lot of overcard type hands, um, ace high type hands, and now that ace hit, I'm kind of worried that he hit his ace. So we're gonna check again. He could have small pocket pairs, but those bet the flop. So he's mostly on an ace high type hand right here or just missed over cards. Now my opponent is probably gonna bet. Um, it kind of confuses me that he's taking so long. He checks back. So that's pretty interesting. So now we can assume he probably doesn't have an ace. So we're just gonna bet the river and take it down. So what did he have? He probably had overcard type hands or just a missed hand like 8-9 suited that he didn't want to bluff at. Why did I check the flop? Because that board does not hit my perceived range and my opponent because of that is likely to bet it when checked to and when he does I can check raise representing an overpair or a set. I get that extra money. We flop 4 here, um, it's a way ahead or way behind situation, if I bet I get called, um, I'm not going to be too happy uh, with what to do on the turn, so I'm going to start with a check, and check call, this way I can have a lot more hands in my range, I could have a 9 that I'm slow playing, I could have an overpair, I could have ace high of course, and I could have a 4, I'm going to call the turn again, and make a decision on the river. This is a board my opponent will see but at a very high frequency, so we have to check. He bets. Um, I can go for a check call, which I'm probably going to do because my opponent is going to barrel a lot on the turn, probably, uh, as he should, with all his overpairs and all his draws that he turned. But he checks back, so he probably doesn't have much. So we're going to go for a small bet and hope to get called by ace highs or induce a bluff raise. And we did get called by pocket sixes. So interesting he decided not to bet the turn. Going to check call here with the ace high uh, which ranks to be probably the best hand at this moment. Turn is a 9, so there's a lot of straight draws that turned. 10-7, um, 10-8, ten ten queen-10, ten, king-queen. He does not bet the turn. Uh, I'm going to go for an overbet here to represent that I have a jack and get him to fold ace highs as well as pocket fives, pocket sixes, po well pocket fours isn't folding, but you get the, you get the point. Nine five suit loose open, but I'm gonna make it anyway. Again, a flop that doesn't really hit my range too often. Um, so I'm gonna start with check. And that card does hit my range, so I'm gonna bet here because now that my opponent checked the flop, I don't expect him to start bluffing. Um, if you want to bluff, you probably would have bluffed the flop. This opponent checks too. Uh, I'm gonna bet the turn, probably taking it down, unless he turned the jack. Is jack will be a tribute for me.
Okay, so we got two situations here. I'm going to start with check call here, with the back doors. Represent a uh, made hand. Now that jack hits, I can't really represent that I have uh, a jack, but I can definitely represent that I have a ha small pocket pair. I'm going to tongue bed out and represent a pocket pair that's trying to get some value. And we get quickly raised. So, could be a bluff. Um, can definitely because his range is stronger than mine. Um, he can have all the big pocket bears and I can't. So, but there's really not much we can do about it here. My perceived range was that I have a full house. So, my opponent probably doesn't expect me to fold a full house. Um, unless he knows more about me. So it's pretty likely that he did have an overbear. Country bet here. We get cold four bet. Um, we have to fold. Country bet here. Going to trip at the tens. This is a way ahead, way behind situation. Um, if I bet, um, probably mostly gonna get called by better hands. Um, so I'm just gonna check back and attempt to get the showdown. My opponent bets pretty big on the turn, uh, which could indicate he has king queen, or a flush draw, or a jack, or a set. I'm gonna call one and see what he does on the river. My perceived range is actually what it is. It could be pocket tens, it could be ace nine, um, it could be a turned flush draw, ace king high. Oh, and thinks about it and bets the pot. Um, this is a spot um, all the draws missed. Um, so, um, my, my opponent probably expects me to call pretty light in this situation, um, given that all the draws missed. So, I'm actually going to make the fold. At these stakes, um, people are not very bluff happy on the river. So when they make a big bet on the river, especially when there's not really any scary cards on board, um, they usually have it. I had to be right um, because he bet about 33% of the time, and I don't think uh, I was going to be right 33% of the time there. We call here. Ace nine suited. Again, a good flop for my range. Uh, is it the board he's gonna see bet? Um, probably not. So I'm gonna dunk bet.
this guy is pretty short so if I tree bet I'm, I'm not gonna have great SPR and probably not too much full equity against this guy so I'm not gonna tree bet him SPR is a stack to pot ratio um, you want to have a high stack to pot ratio which means you have a lot of big blinds uh, post flop compared to the pot uh, if you want to be bluffing a lot, gonna tree bet this. This range is gonna be very wide for raising the small blind, and I have position, and there's no players left to edge behind me, so I can tree bet very wide. Let's see, bet this flop. Bon check back the flop, probably doesn't have an ace. Gonna bet bet. And we're gonna go for the over bet on the river, we're trying to get into fold the 10 or queens or jacks or kings but he quickly calls and he did have an ace so he got us there my opponent called um, could have a jack could have a draw like king queen queen 10 um, 5 6 suited um, but he check raises the turn so now he's definitely representing a very strong hand um, ace 2 ace 5 ace jack pocket jacks, pocket fives, so we're gonna fold. Usually people don't uh, check raise bluffs, bluff uh, turns very often, so you can uh, make a lot of folds, tight folds, and exploit your opponent's uh, tendencies that way. Flop a 10, um, I'm gonna start with a bet. My perceived range is gonna be very wide on this board, so I expect to get floated a lot. Um, we could check the turn, uh, try to induce, or we could bet again, try to protect. I'm gonna bet again. My opponent called a flop, um, has a lot of checks and queens in this range, which probably have a straight draw on the turn. Uh, but I'm gonna bet again because I have a king, I block king 9, I have a 10, I block queen 10 and jack 10 and my I can have ace king, I can have all the big hands and he can so uh, we river the straight um, it's a pretty scary river because flush got in so we could have backdoor the flush uh, with queen x or jack x of spades um, he's not gonna call a big bet so we're gonna go for a small bet to get called by Queen 9, Jack 9. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If he somehow slow plays a set of fours, he might call. And he does call. We're gonna see what he had. He had each jack and didn't believe us. So far I find that 10 and 0 is a little bit more stationary than 5 and 0, um, but that just could be a skewed sample. Flop a jack here, um, it's a way ahead or way behind situation, but there's a lot of draws out there, like king queen, 8 9, uh, so I have to protect my hand. Let's see bet here, we get called. Um, it's a good turn card. Um, doesn't really hit his range unless he has a4 suited. Um, we're definitely beat by ace jack. Um, jack 10 or pocket 10s could be slow playing. But I'm gonna bet again. I'm gonna bet a little bit smaller because I don't want to get called by a 10 and straight draws. Like king queen, queen 9 suited, 8 9 suited. He does call. Um, I don't think we're gonna induce a bluff from the straight draws if we check. Um, question is, how much will he call with a weaker hand, like Queen Jack or Ace 10? I don't think he's gonna call too much. So I'm gonna make a. Well, actually, I'm gonna make a 250 bet and try to represent the bluff. Um, because if I bet too small on this on this river, it's gonna represent the value hand, 
and he's not gonna call with a 10. So we have to bet. I could have bet a little bit bigger to represent the bluff. Um, this, again, looks maybe a little bit too value betty. And he calls with ace jack, so that's unfortunate. That was uh, near the top of his range. I could have checked the river to check fall. I'm gonna call for a bet here. Um, question is how much? Um, flop a set of kings, so and he just jams, so we have an easy call. He does not hit backdoor quads, luckily. <laughs> we get three bet here. Um, it's a squeeze. It's a good squeeze situation. Um, I don't know if this guy is capable of squeezing light. Um, I'm gonna take a flop, um, expecting this guy to call too, very often. We have position. We have a suited connected hand. Flop is uh, good for our range, good for three betters range because if he has over pairs, he's definitely going to be happy. He's gonna definitely going to be betting his over pairs. Um, he bets very big, um, which tells me he probably has an over pair because uh, he wouldn't be betting ace king into two players this big. Um, probably that would be a bad idea. So I'm just going to fold, even though I have some equity. I do not have any fold equity. We call a tree bet here. Uh, we're gonna call one on the flop. Uh, this is a good board for my opponent's range. He has a lot of ace kings in this range, so pretty dangerous. Um, he also has ace queen and ace jack in his range with clubs. Um, even though he's gonna have a draw a lot of the time on the turn here, um, I really can't continue because those draws have a lot of equity against me. So at best, I have. Uh, I'm a slight favorite, and at worst, I'm pretty dead, so I'm gonna fold. So far this session isn't going too well, but that's fine. Should expect a lot of variance on uh, especially short sessions. If you expect to win every time, you're gonna be pretty disappointed and that in turn could put you on tilt, which you definitely don't want that to happen. So keep your head cool, play your normal game, uh, and uh, you'll do fine. Tree bet here. Uh, my opponent has very wide range for calling my tree bet, so I'm not too worried that this board hits his range specifically. So definitely gonna see that. I'm gonna make this video uh, 45 minutes because I want to get into a few more spots. Turn a set. Um, my opponent probably doesn't have much, so we're gonna check to him and hope he hits something on the river. 
queen on the river, so we hope he hit it. Um, he's probably gonna bet it if he hit it. If he doesn't, he probably doesn't have much. So, yeah. And he just had ace king high, so he definitely wasn't calling a bet. Definitely tributing ace king here. My opponent with dunk bets um, the minimum, which is indicative of a very weak hand. Um, I'm gonna raise it up. Um, this is pretty much for value. He calls. So, could have a hand like queen 10 or 10 8 or 10 7. Um, um, I'm gonna bet the turn because I have a king. I'm gonna shove this in. Against the four bit, and we get a fold. So interesting. Um, that that guy is capable of four bit bluffing, which is uh, which is gonna be a bad idea against me when I'm three betting out of position because my range is gonna be pretty strong. Okay, so this flop does not hit my opponent's range too much. Uh, let's see bet. Quickly calls. So flush draws, small pocket pairs, some ace highs. So definitely gonna barrel the turn because this range is still quite weak. Snap calls. So definitely could have a jack now. Um, and could still have a lot of flush draws. I'm gonna overbet this river and represent an overpair. any faults. I didn't mean to check back this flop, uh, but it's definitely a fine play. Now that my opponent bets, um, I mean my range looks pretty weak. Um, I could raise here, but there's not too much value in it. Uh, I'm just gonna call. This guy tree bet very small, um, he doesn't have big stack. But I'm gonna peel one off. And he bets the river. So question is how much value can we get by raising? I think we can raise it up to 380 and expect to get called quite often. But he doesn't. This guy checks to me, um, which is pretty suspic suspicious. Uh, I'm gonna check back, try to get my free card. And uh, we do get there. So now I just praying he has aces. And I'm just gonna shove him in because he has a short stack. He's probably a fish. If he does have a, uh, a big hand like a, a queen or better, he's not gonna fold. So we just ship it in. And he does have aces. Sky check back. Um, we're gonna overbet the turn to get ace highs to fold, and yeah, pretty much get ace highs to fold. He quickly calls, so he could have an eight. Um, could still have a flush draw. Uh, probably doesn't have a queen, but he could have a queen. Could have sloped a queen on the flop. Um, I don't think I'm gonna overbet in this spot because it's, he's gonna have a queen too often in his range. Uh, so I'm gonna check it. And he bets the river, so probably did have the queen. Okay, so this board um, should hit the opening raisers range pretty often. Um, this is pretty close spot. Um, I have a player left to egg behind. Um, I don't have a big or flush draw. I only have a gut shot and an overcard, which could be dead. If he has ace king, so I'm just gonna fold. Okay. 
guess I'll make this 50 minutes because I feel like keeping on going. Okay, so this board, um, I can have ace king and he doesn't, um, but he's a short stack, so probably pretty fishy, um, which means I'm gonna check it because I don't expect to, to have too much full equity and check fold. Let's see bet here. Get it quickly called. Um, could definitely have a lot of flushes in his range and he's not gonna fold those. Um, the question is, uh, can I get him off flush by the river? Um, I don't know. I'm gonna check and fold probably. Checks back. Um, so probably doesn't have the ace high flush. Um, but I don't think I can get him to fold a flush. Um, could have a weak check. I'm actually gonna overbet here. Um, expecting a, a just check to fold and maybe some flushes. He did quickly fold. Here we get a call. Um, could have a7, could have pocket ace, pocket sevens. Um, I'm wondering if he's gonna bet if I check to him. Um, but I don't really want to give him a free card. So I'm gonna bet something. And he quickly shoves. Could have ace5 suited. Uh, probably doesn't have a set because those shove the flop. So I'm gonna call and expect to. Yeah, because the uh, tens or that, yeah. Gonna isolate this fish out of position with a suited king. And he clicks it back, so, I mean, it's representing a very strong range. Um, pocket aces, pocket queens, pocket jacks, pocket kings. Um, I'm gonna call because I have the pot outs. And we miss, so just gonna check full now. So you pretty much owned us there. <laughs> gonna treat with the kings here. And I'm gonna wrap up the video. You get a cool color, but I'm not too worried about him. He's a short stack. He has a Chrome Star, so he's definitely not a great player. Definitely not a regular. Uh, I don't think he's gonna bet too much uh, one check two against two player. So we definitely have to bet to protect our hand get some value. This guy also pretty short. Uh, and there we go. So the bankroll is now at $141 so made a little bit of profit. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.